This is a project we worked on recently, that is Eastern Shore Broadcasting worked on recently, over in Destin, Florida. This is a, a pretty large LED wall, about 30 feet by 40 feet, mounted on the back of a, uh, a former work vessel. This is an oil rig vessel that would, would service oil rigs and uh, take machinery back and forth to the oil rigs. Um, this was uh, done from the dock in Shalimar, Florida. I don't know if you'll, you'll see in just a minute uh, uh, at the edge of the dock next to the boat, uh, our good friend R.J. Murdoch, who did this drone video for us. Big, big hat tip to R.J. at uh, East, Emerald Coast TV in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And the, the project was to actually install a vMix PC inside this, this ship that would attach to the servers that serve the, the video wall that's actually a dual side video wall. The, the boat would is intended to cruise up and down the coast there in, in northwest Florida uh, so that all the beachgoers can see the, the shout outs that they can, they can put on there, the will you marry me signs, the advertising of course from advertisers, and occasionally the boat will park in, in a harbor like this uh, at the request of a local bar and grill and maybe show a football game or a, or a movie or something like that, and all the bar goers can uh, sit out there in their lawn chairs and, and sip, sip a cool one and watch the movie. Um, and then sometimes this ship will uh, go to a place called Crab Island, which is a, a shallow area inside, of, uh, inside a bay where hundreds if not thousands of, of boats will gather on holiday weekends and, and Saturday and Sundays. And on Sunday mornings, the, the boat will actually uh, stream a, a church worship service so folks can uh, be involved in the worship service. Interesting, interesting concept that the, I, this is the uh, pilot project for this group called Splashboards, and they hope to, uh, to build their own ships and deploy them uh, all over Florida, maybe all over the world. Uh, so we look forward to working with them on, on more projects like that. Our little vMix PC is nestled inside the the, uh, the bowels of the ship, as it were, nice air conditioned spot. And, uh, and again, a big hat tip to RJ Murdoch. You can see RJ right there at the, at the dock next to the, to that red pylon. Um, and RJ with, uh, Emerald Coast TV, big hat tip to him. Thanks RJ. And, uh, thanks Eastern Shore Broadcasting. Yeah. Yeah.
Let's throw all the music down. There we go. Hello, folks. We're in pre-show here with Eric Pratt, U.S. Broadcast. U.S. Broadcast Distribution. Sorry, I should have put the whole thing on there, but I thought U.S. Broadcast just sounded so cool. It's just like U.S. Broadcast. You're huge. You're just all over. You're all over the U.S. Oh, hold it. I muted your mic. Well, that there. Ring, there you are. Now you're back. Hey, doggone triggers. <laughs> what are triggers for but to mute your guests? Um, oh, that, that's right. Yeah, actually, you got it right. If you look at the website, it's just U.S. broadcast because we do more than just distribution. Oh, so I missed that, your name. Sorry about that. Oh, my. I know. Well, it's only the pre-show. Well, you know, if you wanted to be on a, it's a, only a, a thousand real professional watching. show, you wouldn't have shown up here. Okay. All right. All right. So Kevin's here. Tim is here. And uh, you, Eric, you're looking at the YouTube um, comments, but there's some Chat. from Facebook also. Um, yeah. From the Eastern Shore Broadcasting Facebook page. One I might as well. Saying that we should have proofread all the things we posted, probably including your name. So sorry about that, guys. Yeah, that's all right. A Pratt with one T is only a an ass. Did you know that? <laughs> no. The, the strangest thing. It's a British slang. Yeah, nothing to say to that one. My wife saw it on TV the other. Uh, there was uh, some some TV show going, and somebody was like, "Oh, quit being such a Pratt." And she's like, she looks at me, and she's like. What aren't you telling me? <laughs> and as it turns out, uh, I, I descend from uh, English noble tree, and apparently one of my ancestors was a real jerk. Uh, so they named. Oh, no. They, yes. Pratt literally means jerk in British slang. Like the Fortunately, guy it's not. Crapper. Yeah. yeah. There's probably a couple other examples we won't go into. Oh, sure <laughs> I'm sure there are. The Omaha Junior Lancers High School Hockey is watching today. Welcome. Glad to have you. We probably won't be talking about hockey specifically, but uh, Eric's from New Hampshire, so you never know. We might just get into something like that by accident. Let's see. Let's make sure I don't have any live stream pages open here that are chewing up bandwidth. Nope. Oh, looks good. Looks good. All right. Very good. Interesting. Interesting. All right. So the countdown says we have two minutes yes, left. And uh, I'm really, I'm really excited, Eric, that you could come on at such short notice, because this little gear that we're going to be talking about today is is cool, and I think it's going to be the the ticket for somebody out there. Um, well, thanks for having somebody. me. I I like to be available in a pinch. Um, I still do a lot of tech support. I got my start in this industry in tech support, so I, I hold such things in extremely high regard. So I like to try to be uh, highly available. I was literally just on a tech support call just before uh, we got on, on the phone, um, on well, the cool. call. So All right. I got too much light over there. How about that? All right, Living Waters from Chesapeake, Virginia. Welcome. I love Chesapeake, Virginia. Yeah, we have a little family Who's house that going? up there. I'm sorry? Joe's uh, mentioned that we're echoing. Oh, golly, that's me. How did I do that? Triggers. <laughs> yeah, what did I do? There's one of you and one of me unless I've got something else going on that I'm not aware of. So Joe, is, is, uh, is, are we both echoing or is it just me or is it just Eric? Testing, one, two, three. I guess we would have to speak in order for him to really be able to tell. Uh, that's interesting though. Probably was a trigger. Let's turn everything off that, that's not applicable. Yep, wasn't that, wasn't that. 
You never know. You get these darn audio cables. And there we go. So let's dismiss that. I might be clipping. Set that on silent. My you might be clipping. My audio looks. Yeah, my audio looks fine on this end. I'm not not pegging over here. Uh, you were just a little hot on my end, so I, I turned you down just a little bit to try to equal me. If you turn me down far enough. Tom's audio lower than yourself. guest. Thank you, Al. Let's see if we've got a little bit more we can crank out here. We'll, add a couple well it's of three o'clock, and that's why we have uh, pre-shows. Yeah, 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 Whee! yeah, yeah. All right. Troy's here. Alan's here. Otis is here. Chris is here. Okay. Al, how's that? Am I am I closer to Eric? I can always turn him down more. <laughs> Richard is watching from Earth. Richard was over here. Rich was over here near me last weekend, Panama City Beach, uh, doing a jet ski live stream. He does those all across the country. And he had set up a uh, an old iPhone in some sort of uh, waterproof case and had put it on the front of a jet ski to get a real live shot. And I think that the, the, uh, the gaffer tape or whatever he used lasted about one lap and then the phone went flying. At least that's how I heard the story. Alec, Al says that we're perfect now. And Marie's here, welcome. All right. I have gotten to meet Marie in person. I've gotten to meet Rich in person. I've gotten to meet Otis in person. I've gotten to meet you, Eric, in person, but I have not met Al Bunt in person. And I've probably known Al the longest of anybody. I mean, known, you know, over the internet known. So there you go. I was trying to find a picture this morning when I was putting up uh, the, the promotion for the live stream, Eric, of, of you and I in the airport in Amsterdam. Yeah, um, and, that was a uh, good one. And you, you know, leading poor little me who just didn't have a clue about anything. Yeah, you, know, you got you got you got your trains over here, and you got your whatever they were metros over here. Yep. Jay well, we're lucky you now. got in an IBC when you did. Yeah, yeah, that was really a great experience. I can't wait to go again. It was. It really yeah. was. And, you know, the, the part of it that I, I liked the best was just getting able to meet people that I never, ever would have met in the U.S. Um, are you going to go to BVE? Me? Yeah. <laughs> no. You went to IBC? Um, yeah, but BVE is a much smaller show. Yeah, um, it might, but it might be huge this year. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I'm hoping to do ISE. ISE will okay. be in Barcelona. Okay. Um, and uh, that's a good one. I'm planning to take my wife to that one uh, because she hasn't been back to Europe in a good good couple of years. So she's always kind of a little cranky slash jealous that uh, you know <laughs> I get to go over to Amsterdam every year. Yeah. So uh, yep. ISE having moved from Amsterdam to Barcelona. Uh, right. We'll probably do a little Southern European trip off of that. There if it go. happens, I mean... Right, we're, we're kind of up in the air about really what's happening at all. But I hope, I hope next year trade shows are back to normal and we all get to do. You know, I'm really missing NAB like you. It's my chance to meet with people and see people yeah. in person, and go yeah. out and have dinner with them and eat nice food and have That's a good right. time. Uh, That's with, right. With people that I only get to talk to. Right. Um, you know, Marie, Marie says knowing people of the internet is just as valid as having met them. And I think she means met them in person. And I agree with that, mm. but there's something about sharing a meal together. There's something about yep. sharing an evening together. You know, there's a bond that, that you get as a result of that. And, you know, Marie and Jan and Sandy and I went out uh, at, at IBC, actually the night before IBC opened and had a wonderful meal overlooking a lake in an old castle or something like that. It was just, it was really, really special. And it was cold as yeah. all get out too. Gee whiz. But they brought blankets out. I thought that was cool. All right. So Marie's gonna go to Barcelona, but uh, she can't get Jan to go there. Jim's here. He's from Folsom, California. Okay, well we are we are, you know, 
what, four minutes over time. So we better get going with the show show because we're just still in pre-show here. Nobody knew that because I don't have a pre-show moniker down there, but I'll work on that. All right, Eric, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you, but I promise to unmute you at the right Better time. Rip. And then uh, I'll do a little intro monologue thing, get my X key 80 here handy. And then we'll, uh, you know what? Somehow I turned my mic off just a second ago. I just want to make sure that I haven't lost the ability to turn myself on. Okay, there we go. All right, we got it. We got it. We got it. The Elijah Ministries are here. Glad to have it. Michael Quist is here from Denmark. We've got good representation from across the Atlantic. All right, well, let's uh, let's do an intro and um, let's get going and sit tight. Here we go. Ah, hello and welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair. This is Streaming Idiots. You have arrived at the end of the internet. <laughs> no, seriously. Do you realize that Streaming Idiots is the longest continually running live streaming show about live streaming shows? <laughs> yes. July 12th. No, July 2012 was when we started. Um, we've changed name, of course, from those days. But uh, yeah, 2012. So we'll be coming up on our our eight-year anniversary next month. Eight years of streaming idiots. Holy cow. Can you believe it? Oh, wow. Hey, before I forget to mention it, I want to thank those of you that have subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, the Streaming Idiots Eastern Shore Broadcasting YouTube channel. If you haven't, we'd love to have you subscribe. We are just a smidgen away from 6,000 wonderful viewers. So, uh, it, it's really just an ego trip. I mean, you know that. That's the deal. But but YouTube does sort of reward us by placing us in 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 places where people will see us, and so we we always do appreciate that. So if you haven't already subscribed to us on YouTube, we'd love to have you do that. And of course, you know Facebook too, the Eastern Shore Broadcasting page. But really, probably the the coolest thing you can do is join the Streaming Idiots group on Facebook. Yeah, there's a group that we're talking about live streaming pretty much 24-7, asking questions, sharing ideas, you know, thoughts, tips, and tricks, all that kind of thing. Of course, the live stream of this show, Streaming Idiots, is, is being live streamed to the Streaming Idiots group, of course. So uh, we, we, it's uh, and a hat tip again to uh, Jan and Marie for starting that group. Well, I guess it's been two years ago, maybe two and a half years ago now. Um, and it's been wildly successful, and we're, we're delighted to have so many folks in there chatting with us on a regular basis. Lots of good stuff being shared there. One of the things that's being shared there is technology about encoding to NDI. And uh-oh, golly, sorry about that. Phone is ringing, and I've got it set on vibrate, which I should never do. So let's throw that one to voicemail, and let's go all the way down to super silent. Problem with super silent is I forgot to turn it back on. Yeah, that's right. I just think, you know, nobody loves me anymore. Nobody's calling. Anyway, NDI. So we're going to talk with, with somebody in just a second about uh, how to take video and put it into an NDI format that does not involve hamsters. So I thought you'd be interested to know that right up front. Uh, the whole Streaming Idiot show is sponsored by Eastern Shore Broadcasting. It, it's a giant infomercial for Eastern Shore Broadcasting. I think if you go to easternshorebroadcasting.com right now, in fact, you may have already gone there in order to watch the YouTube feed of this show and get in on the chat. But if you go to easternshorebroadcasting.com right now, you'll, you will see that we have the Yuan PD570 Pro and I should have had one hand here in my hand. We've got them in stock. It's that USB 3 HDMI dongle, um, 250. And uh, we've got them in hand. We've got them in stock. So if you've been searching around for a way to get HDMI video into your laptop or your PC, that's the ticket. And, and they're in stock, ready for shipment. You can get them in our store. Um, 
Let's see. Let's bring in our guest. If we did it right, he's going to appear right next to me. Look at that. I don't believe it. Holy cow. Eric Pratt, I have known since 2016 when I met him at the VMIX booth at uh, NAB. That was the year that Martin and Tim had the live streaming um, studio there at their booth. Yep. And they invited me a to come. green screen. Yep, the green screen, and that was when that that was the show where the the uh, forklift knocked the head off of the sprinkler system at the booth next door and oh, flooded yeah. flooded the VMix booth and uh, messed up some of their signage and and it was just it was a mess. But it was a treat because Martin invited me to come do the Streaming Idiot show from that stage, and uh, and that was the probably that was probably the the, the start of 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 my infamy. Um, so you never know. Anyway, it was a lot of fun. And I got to meet this, this young man, Eric Pratt, there. And I thought, you know, who is this guy? He seems to know everything about vMix. He seems to know a whole lot about live streaming. And, uh, and over, the, over the years since then, 2016 to 2020, uh, we have gotten to be friends. And uh, Eric is a regular vendor from U.S. Broadcast. Today we're going to talk about the, uh, the Kill of You which is a name you may not be familiar with, but it's the Kiloview KV, KV for Kiloview, KVE1. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I figured that, Eric, I figured that one out all by myself. It just, you know, some days I amaze even myself. <laughs> well, we added the KV. Uh, oh, you Kiloview did. just calls it the E1. K oh, yeah. well, okay. Well, there you go. Well, that's just to differentiate if another manufacturer comes up with a product that's complexly named as an E1. So and that you don't get skews messed up. Yeah. There you go. It's not a complicated name. Well, it it's even says it, possible. it even says it on the back. KVE1. I like that. So so tell tell me about the KVE1. We that from us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so yeah, actually um I got my first KVE1 uh at NAB New York of 2018. I had the uh, Kiloview DHL it to me. And you may notice that it bears a striking resemblance to um another product that uh you've seen on the market that does uh NDI HX. And Kiloview is yes. a manufacturer of yes, it does bear a striking resemblance to does. to some other products that do hmm. very similar things. However, starts with an there are S and ends with a K. I can't really comment. Um, can't really, but comment. in a okay, nutshell, that's fair enough. Fair enough. There's there's a crucial difference um, in that the E1 not only does NDI HX, and soon with a firmware update HX2, it also does SRT, RTMP, HLS, and TSUDP. Now you might not have heard of the last two, but you probably heard of the previous two. SRT That's a bunch of really initials. Popular. Go back through that list a little bit more slowly and, right. and unpack it for us. Okay. Three different kinds of NDI. You're probably familiar with them. Full Three bit different rate kinds NDI. of NDI. Uh, yep. NDI. Full bit rate NDI. Right. NDI HX, which you're also probably familiar with. And NDI HX2, which is the next evolution of NDI HX based on HEVC. So you get the same bit rates, but twice the quality. So uh, that version you're holding in your hand is NDI HX. I have a firmware update for it. So when I say soon, I mean like now, uh, NDI HX2. So those are the NDI flavors. This, this unit you're holding in your hand does not do full NDI. Okay, let's back up just a second because you, you slipped that one by me and, and, and I'm a little slow on the uptake sometimes, but that's all right because eventually I get it. You're saying that this little box right here currently will do NDI HX, the original NDI HX, but that the the new NDI HX two uses the same bit rate but twice the quality for NDI yeah. HX. So, holy correct. cow! Why yes. would not everybody want NDI part. HX two? Um, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> I have a firmware yeah. update. To yeah, test it, so we're we're all going we're all going to be guinea pigs. Um, so uh, Ada, okay. they make a PTZ camera. Their and their flavor of NDI is HX2. So we've actually already been using NDI HX2. Okay. VMix is already primed for it. New Tech, uh, everybody 
is already ready to rock and roll with NDI HX2. It shouldn't require anything new for anybody to do on their end, unless they already have an E1, in which case they will just need a firmware update. Gotcha. To support HX2. So it looks so, like this guy has got... That's uh, NDI. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so NDI, NDI HX, and NDI HX2. And this will do NDI right. HX today and NDI HX2 Tomorrow. shortly after this show. <laughs> yeah. Very before, soon. Uh, before I and let not it as soon as in like someday soon, like I actually have the firmware update to start testing it. I what I don't it. have is an E1. So... I have no demo units for what you're holding in your hand. You have an E1, you, <laughs> I have an E1, and you have a firmware update. Yeah. You can get me the firmware update faster than I can get you the E1. It's true. <laughs> um, but more uh, back to the point is that yes, that was the NDI. The um, E1 magically does uh, another format. Um, two formats that people are really interested in in this day and age of remote production. And that would be SRT, Secure Reliable Transport. So Secure Reliable Transport is the ability to take video into that box. And instead of like NDI, where you spread it around a local network, SRT lets you shoot it off to another point on the internet. Uh, without paying any fees or really a lot of complicated complex stuff for uh, and I'll, I'll I won't steal your thunder on the MSRP but for a fairly low price this box will do NDI and SRT at the same time and it is to my knowledge the only product doing that and it also does RTMP which we're all familiar with oh, okay he talks so quickly. These people from the North talk so quickly and they just throw out all these letters and numbers like you're supposed to understand what they're talking about. So SRT I got, Secure Reliable Transport. VMix introduced it in VMix 22, I guess, or maybe 23. Mm -hmm. Anyway, back in September um, in Amsterdam yep. at IBC, VMix introduced SRT. They had an SRT feed coming from Australia that was absolutely pristine. I never saw it break up at all. And so what you're saying is that I can plug this guy into my local area network with this handy dandy um, internet port right here, uh, or this ethernet port right here. And, and I can get into the guts of this guy and I can configure it to send and or receive, which no, it, it just sends SRT, sends. right? Because it's yep. an encoder, not yep. a decoder. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I can set and up that, all the Without jumping ahead, we also have decoders. Oh, you jumped ahead. He says without jumping ahead as he jumps ahead. You know, that's a, that's an old political trick. You, you caught yeah. You caught that. Yeah. You, it's, it's, you, know, <laughs> you, you can't slip everything by me. All right. So so I can use this for SRT. And that is whatever, whatever signal is coming into this is going to be available uh, to go out SRT. Somewhere else. Somewhere else. Yeah. Right. And Whatever goes into there goes out somewhere else. And so neat. Here's here's the neat thing. So okay. you can take one of these boxes and yes. you've got a copy of vMix in your studio. Your studio, for example. You set that up to send SRT to your public IP address and you port forward it to your copy of vMix. And anywhere that you plug that box in on the internet, that video will magically show up into vMix. What? Yeah. It's sort of like vMix Call, except for it's one directional. Yeah. Um, it's broadcast quality and it's SRT and it's hardware based. So if you need to bring in a camera from a campus or a host or a pastor uh, that is remote, this is a way of ingesting that into vMix remotely. And all I have to do is set this up and it remembers. Yeah. So when you, when in your studio, you just sit there and you type on your, you log in via web browser and you type yeah. in, your, there's also a, a cell phone app, but let's gloss over that for a second. You log into your web browser and you tell it what IP address that you want it to stream to and it's turned on. Okay. So you give it the IP address, the public IP address of your studio. You type in what's right my yep. IP to yep. a browser. Yep. And then you have to do one complex thing which is you have to go into your router and or you, you have to find the model number of the router for your studio and you Google port forwarding. Right. And the, you will probably find directions for how to port forward. So let's say I use five port 5000 frequently. 
So I will set port 5000 to forward to my vMix computer. And every couple of weeks, I host, I host something called SRT Saturday. I have yeah. nine ports on, the, uh, on my router that are forwarded. And I publicly publish those in a stream. And I say, here, feel free to connect to it. And that way you can test out. vMix not only does SRT in, it does SRT out. So in the settings outputs tab under the little gear there is a setting for the IP address that you want to send to. So if you want to receive from an E1 to vMix and then vMix to a D300, which is the decoder, you can create a whole network of IP-based video spanning the globe. Amazing. It's kind of cool. Now, if I send this to somebody, they have to open a port too. No, that's the neat no. thing. No, because because it knows where it's going. The problem is, is when it gets to your studio, it gets to your IP address, and it's like, okay, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. And that's where you have to tell it what the if if your vMix computer is on a publicly addressable IP address to the right. internet, right. you can tell it to go straight there without port forwarding. Right. But on the other end, you're plugging it in. It says just send it off to Tom's studio. It doesn't need any magic on the recipient end, which makes sending these boxes out to non-technical people in order to send video in yes. easy. Yes. It does. Holy cow. Now, this is an SDI like box. A, an IP. Yes. And there's also an HDMI version. And there's an HDMI D2. box. Or if we had a converter, yeah. we can plug into this one. Because I yeah. already have this one SDI is always going to be... Well, SDI is always going to be better because you can run SDI 300 feet and put in a converter on the other end. Sure. So you can take your HDMI out and run it a lot further. I mean, but we can have that argument. You... I mean, that, that, that debate one day about which one is better, HDMI or SDI. I'll or, take either side of that or, debate. Yeah. Well, or you can put this wherever your camera is and run HDMI into it and use Ethernet as the, the bridge. So. Right. Right. Okay. The world is your oyster. All right, so so this guy will do, I can set this here. I can get into it here. I can set it for SRT to come here, and then I can ship this anywhere in the world where they have an internet connection via Ethernet. Can't be Wi-Fi because yep. this is not a Wi-Fi device, right? There's no Wi-Fi in here. That's correct. There is he a took Wi-Fi took a deep model. breath as if to say, well, but wait. <laughs> yes. Well, from a simplicity standpoint, not dealing with Wi-Fi is, is preferred, but we have, you know, the ability to do Wi-Fi units as well. Okay. All right. So but we we're not I there like, yet. I like the E-series. Yeah. 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 Okay. So this is... You're holding my favorite one. Golly. And you sent it to me. I'm, I'm, I'm just really impressed. He really likes me. Okay. Um, so it only says NDIHX on the outside. Well, it does say H.264, but it doesn't say SRT, SRT. on it. It, sh it should yeah. say SRT um, on it. It should. They, uh, they only just just joined the SRT Alliance, so they are gotcha. allowed to put gotcha. it on there now. I probably just don't. I don't even know if the batch that I'm getting on Monday has an SRT logo on it. I got you. Okay. But hey, Maggie's here. Does SRT. XK80. We're using them right here. Maggie's here. Everybody say hi to Maggie. She works for X keys. Okay, sorry about that. Shameless plug and good friend. Um, all right, so we got SRT going in. We've got NDIHX currently coming out and with the upgrade, with the firmware update, it's gonna be H NDIHX2, which I'd love to see those side by side and see the difference. Anyway, that's, that's a different story. I, will, um, I wanna check out the same exact thing. Yeah. I will do that. Okay. Um, well, I, I guess I could make a Art. recording of this and then a recording of it after, a before and after recording and compare them and see. Um, I'll just take two and put them side by side. Yeah, well, I only have the one. You only sent me one. I think I need to order like 10 of them. Okay. I, let, let's not get greedy. <laughs> <laughs> there are only That's two right. demo units. Well, no, I mean these. You've got a bunch more coming in, though, and I don't need. Yes. I, I, I mean, I mean ones that people that people can say, "Hey, Tom, send me one." That's what we're what we're looking for. 
Everybody's saying hi to Maggie. That's a good thing. Yeah, Maggie's special. All right, so SRT, got SRT. Then then you mentioned um, a four-letter word. <laughs> so tell me about the four-letter word. Well, we're streaming to YouTube and Facebook, right? Yeah, we currently are. Show, currently. Yes, yes. Yeah. So the neat thing is, is that this will do NDIH, XSRT, and RTMP all at the same time. And you can have two different bit rates. So if you want so to I could, I could rate, use this to send to, uh, to YouTube? YouTube and Facebook, yep. No, only one. Either one. I can't send to both. Um, you can do two. Uh, so it, it actually it uses the same model that vMix does, which it'll let you get in trouble if, if you don't know how to use it. So <laughs> vMix is... V vmix is great in that it's not uh it's not like wearing a pair of tidy whities it's free you know you can create as many inputs as you have resources for but you can you can get yourself in a lot of trouble by opening up 20 oh, web browser Lord. pages uh, you know web browser inputs and maxing out your gpu mem so the same is true with kiloview is that he lost it will, me a tidy whitey it, it, it just <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry it has a it has a finite amount of CPU and memory, and you can do up to a 40 meg stream is the max that it caps out at. 30 is the max that I recommend people like to do. Oh, okay. that's something else unusual. Um, most NDIHX devices are locked to 12 or 15 megabits per second. Really? From the manufacturer, yes. Okay. This will let you go down to two megs and up to 40, though I don't let like to tell people to go past 30. So it's a adjustable bitrate NDIHX encoder. So we can do a 15 meg NDIHX for your local network and a 2 meg SRT to uh, remote and then a 2 meg um, RTMP to Facebook. Right. Or right. we could do two, 2 meg RTMP to Facebook and YouTube. Right. Got it. Cool. Now, and all, where exactly, all that's based on what exact combination? Yes. Go on. Sorry. But but all that's based on the the interface, the web interface that I can use to access this this little guy to set all that up in. Yes. Which yes. also is an app on a cell phone, which you haven't already mentioned, even though you did. Um. um yeah. But, but so we'll get, we have we'll a get cell phone app. Yeah, all right, we'll get yes. to that right now. Go ahead. There's a um, cell phone app. You know. Yeah, I hope, do I have a, do I even have, it would be nice if I had a, a unit on the network. I unplugged, I unplugged my only, um, this is games. <laughs> so while, while Eric looks uh, like that, I want to, I want to, I want to tell you guys that despite the appearance, this, this show is entirely unrehearsed. <laughs> we have, <laughs> We have not rehearsed this and, and spent hours planning this show. I know it looks like it, but uh, don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. So, so we've got NDIHX, we've got I, SRT, we've got R, we've got RTMP, and more than I one would have RTMP. To hook some, I unplugged this so that I could physically show it up and wave it at you guys. So it's yeah. not on the network, so I can't show you the the app. Sorry. Poor thing but I can I can get an app. Or do I have yes. to be a person, a special person? Now, app? it's only for Android. No iPhone apps for you. No problem. Is there another kind of phone besides Good. an Android? <laughs> I will not tell you otherwise. So there's an iPhone app which will let you manage your fleet of encoders, turn them okay. on and off, create bit rates, set destinations, okay. or anything that's on the network. And turn recording. Oh, I didn't mention that's got like an SD card to do recording. So yeah, can, I saw that. Little little yeah. micro or whatever size that is right there. Yeah, regular SD card. Regular regular SD card. Okay. No, isn't it on the other side? Am I wrong? No, you're right. Is it? Yeah, it's 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 the little mini. The micro. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's also got a USB slot, so you can record to uh, a, a USB stick. Yeah. It has two so, USBs. I forgot to mention it can record as well. And it has an on-off switch on that side. Handy. So we've got uh, two USBs 
the SD micro SD and the on off switch. And then on this side, we've got uh, 12 volt power. And by the way, this 12 volt power screws on. I like that. So it's not going to get knocked out by accident. And then we've got another USB, the little, um, I guess it's the mini, is it mini USB? The, the old, the old style of small one. And then in and out, I guess that's uh, audio and then in and loop for SDI and then the ethernet. Yeah, I guess it's important to note that you can uh, bring in your audio via SDI or HDMI, but if you have a separate audio source, you can bring it in via 3.5 mil. There you go. Stereo, I would assume. Yeah. Okay. All right, so it, we keep getting lost, and, and, and it's because of me. I apologize. So we got NDIHX, soon to be NDIHX2. We've got SRT. We've got RTMP maybe more than one. Um, and that's all as, as outputs. And we can store, we can make a recording of whatever we want. Um, and we can loop out SDI and we yep. can input audio on 3.5 and we can output audio on 3.5, by the way. Um, is now this... how much would you pay for it? No, 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 <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> Um, is this PoE? Oh, that's a great question. The answer is no, then, if it's a great question. <laughs> the answer is no. Um, yeah. All of their new units are PoE. So the the E-series the e is actually a couple of years old at this okay. point. They keep developing new firmwares for it, but the hardware is unfortunately not PoE. You'll also note that there's an egregious lack of a quarter 20 on the bottom of it. So, uh, consequently... Newer models are PoE and have quarter 20 on the bottom. Yay. But uh, that's not an wait, E wait, 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 wait. Okay. So when you that's say newer models, you don't together. mean newer models of this. You mean newer models of others. Correct. Okay. No, the, got the E series will remain in its form and for the uh, indefinite, gotcha. well, at least for the rest of the year. Okay. All right. So, so this is something that's going to work well in my studio, but I'm not going to. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I mean, I've got a camera over there. And this guy was over here connected to an, an SDI cable, which happened to come from the camera over here and plugged into the power, which is over here and worked yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love POE devices. I've told them the, the next iteration of this needs to be POE, but um, they're focused on new products, all sure. of which are POE. Um, yeah. You know, the nice thing is, is again, this is a very low cost device. Right. We haven't actually gotten to the number yet. I didn't want to well, say your thunder. thunder. If, 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 I, if I were to guess, and I'm saying, okay, it's going to be market, market competitive, this is going to be $500. That's, you know, $499, $495, whatever your, your, your version of $500 is. Um, but really, that's only if it did NDI. You're talking about SRT. And oh, RTMP I know. And HLS. See, and I pay an extra hundred dollars just for the SRT, because if I can take this and I can preset it, and then I can ship it anywhere in the in the world, and somebody plugs in their own camera, and their own microphone, and and plugs it into internet, plugs it into power, I mean, they're they're sending me SRT like right away, right? They're, we don't have to do anything else. It just it's automatic as soon as this guy. Is powered on and hits as the long internet. as you've done your port forwarding at your studio yeah. at my at my end yeah 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 but I'm talking yep. about at the at the yep. guest end yeah correct this is great so this this and and you know I might argue that for the 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 not non tech savvy person out there they're more likely to have well heck it doesn't matter because I'm gonna send them a camera anyway so I'm gonna send them whatever camera I want to with this okay yeah all right. Sweet, sweet. So it so, retails for um, three fifty nine. Good enough. Yep. Deal. Three fifty nine. So that's the E one. Um, somebody asked about the E two, which is the HDMI version. I think that's like three forty. Uh, okay. And it's all the exact same features. Three. Except it's a. Does it have HDMI output? Loop. Loop through. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, and and those are coming into the states next week. Yeah, 
in so they've been back ordered for a couple of weeks uh it's been a real thorn in, in our no side. wonder we had i mean something math. like this we had holy cow well the thing is i mean actually most people aren't buying it for uh the ndi functionality right now they're buying it for the srt because that sure. ability to bridge yeah. remote places together right now is it, you you if you look up what the com the com the com competition uh for srt devices is uh it's quite high so it is probably the lowest cost srt encoder that you can purchase wow so we just we've been upside down on catching up with orders and uh so we every time that we've doubled the orders for them we really should have quadrupled it so instead <laughs> of an exponent of two it should have been an exponent of four yeah um so we yeah. did an exponent of four which we should get in next week unfortunately our freight forwarder decided to put it you know on the slow boat um, not literally. It's just uh, right now commercial air traffic is really bottlenecked, so it's just been slow, slow yep. getting it. But yeah, yep. next week. Tell me um, about it. the fl the floodgates should be open. All right, I'm hearing that about a lot of things. That's good. That's good. All right. So so this is going to be available from Easter Shore Broadcasting next week. Um, three three fifty nine for the SDI version three. 39 for the HDMI version. And uh, we'll, we'll bring some in stock here so that we can make sure that, that, that folks can have them. And we'll, we'll know what, what's available and when. Um, this is sweet. This is sweet. All right. Well, Eric, I tell you what, you're a champ for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. We're going to go to, to, to the post show in just a second. I hope you'll hang around because I think we've got some questions. But uh, I'll be here. You'll be here. Okay. Um, folks, that's yeah, it for the show for today. If, if you're watching live, don't go anywhere, Eric. If you're watching live, uh, by all means, we want you to hang around for the post show. And, and in fact, you know, we, re we record our post show and we, we make it part of the, the recording that you would see on Facebook or YouTube or anywhere else. So, <laughs> so, so stick around even if you're watching us after the fact and uh, get in on the questions that, that Eric's going to be asking in the post show. And of course, you really do want to see Streaming Idiots live. We're on every Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock Eastern time at, uh, well, you can go to streamingidiots.com. I mean, how much simpler could it get than that? But uh, don't forget to join our Facebook group, Streaming Idiots. Don't forget to give us to help us get over the 6,000 mark on our YouTube page uh, of, of our subscribers. We'd love that. And then, uh, you know, visit Eastern Shore Broadcasting. You might find some gear there that you can really use, like the Yuan PD570 Pro, the HDMI to USB 3 uh, dongle or converter or adapter or whatever we call that little piece of gear. It's, it's really handy for a, for a laptop or a PC that doesn't have a capture card. And we've got those in stock right now. We've also got the PTZ Optic cameras in stock, the 30Xs. Anyway, so if you need one of those, let us know. Um, we have, well... Yeah, yes, we still have some in stock. We still have some in stock. Anyway, stick around for the post show. We'll be right back with that in just a moment. And we're now in the post show. Woo! Hey, yeah! Oh my gosh, look at that. All right, so Chris is here from New Zealand. Welcome, Chris. Glad to have you. Ed Horn is here from just north of Detroit. Tommy Willis is here from Tallahassee, Alabama. Holy cow, the house is full. Uh, if you have questions and your question uh, looks like it may have dropped off, <laughs> then ask it again. Um, Chris is asking, does it do, does it do decode? And, and Chris, you weren't here the whole time. If you had been here on time, you would already know the answer to that question. The question is, there is a separate uh, box that does decode and it's like a hundred thousand dollars. Yep. Right. Um, and Ed says he's only a little, a little over an hour from X keys. That's pretty cool. Um, Tommy wants to know if it comes in different colors. Tommy, if you order one from me, I will put it in any color you want. Actually, I think it's probably a powder coated case and we could probably take it out of the case, void the warranty 
and send the case out to a powder coater. So you could get, you could get it in pink, Tommy. You really could. Um, oh, Tommy says it's real town, Alabama. Well, okay, there you go. Uh, Michael Quist has got, uh, okay, he said van- bandwidth usage for NDIHX2 and SRT to an example vMix remote location. Well, I don't think you would do NDIHX to a remote location, right? It's just NDIHX on your local area network. I think I've got Eric muted. Yeah. Sorry about that. Oh, thanks. Just so that whole time, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know me. You know me. It's easier that way. <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want to do NDIHX. Uh, you could over VPN because this has got configurable bandwidth. You could send a 2 meg NDIHX stream, but I don't recommend it. Yeah. You could. Well, well, uh, why not? I mean, why not why? use SRT? Exactly. Exactly. Which is okay. what it's designed for. Okay. All right. Kenny wants to know the model number of the decoder and the price. Eric, you've got So that. there's two. There's a D220, which I think is less. <laughs> um, I, I keep thinking that it's $220, which it's not. I want to say the D220 is about $360, uh, and the D300 um, is $459. And what's the difference, you might add, is the D300 is 4 k uh, and it can handle more sources. So the decoders are actually really cool, and you you wouldn't think that somebody would actually be able to put those words together in a sentence. Decoders are cool um, because it's a multi-viewer decoder. It can actually take in nine sources, and you can put them up. So it's got two outputs. So it's got an HDMI and an SDI output, and it's got an IP output. So it'll actually re-encode your stream for you, and so you can bring in nine sources and then you can encode them to a multi-viewer and put them out your SRT uh, and out your HDMI and then program out the SDI. Did that sound a little confusing? I'm sure it did, but it no, point being is, is that no problem. this thing is actually really cool um, because it can do not just decode a single stream to a single output. It can, it's got two NICs on it, uh, so it can go in one and out the other. It's got HDMI and it's got SDI, so and it will do 4K. So it's just, it's, they're, they're really, I, I can't, I, it's very difficult to do the product justice. All right. So, the, so hold it. I just had an epiphany. The, uh, the D220 and the D300 decoders, the D stands for decoder. And the E1, an encoder, the E stands for, let's hear it, everybody, encoder. There you go. All right, then then tell me what's the G, S, and P stand for? Because I'm Ah, <laughs> the G, S, and P. Well, I think Michael Quist is asking yeah. that same question too. The G, S, yeah. and P. Tell us about the G, so the G, I S, and T, to, S. All right, P. so uh, S isn't available, um, but S is going to be the super do everything in one box. Ah, um, decode, and G is available. Got it. Uh, well, actually, S is going to be full NDI, NDI HX2, encode and decode, SRT, HEVC, Wi Fi, LTE. It's going to be everything. Um, that's it'll the probably S. cost more, hopefully. Yeah, that's the S. <laughs> yeah. Not available. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, don't have an ETA on that. Uh, when you go ETA. and look at Kiloview's website, yeah, when you go look at their website, you'd think everything's already shipping. But that is the nature of certain companies in the industry is to act more like they're ready now. Um, G has been around for a while. The difference between E and G is that the G is Wi-Fi, but no NDI. Uh, part of the agreement with New Tech would be that they can, that Kiloview cannot sell the G series uh, with NDI. So Got that's it. why the E series has NDI and the G series does not. We don't really do much with the G series. However, it will do SRT. If you want SRT and Wi-Fi, but not an actual Wi-Fi battery-powered camera-mounted unit, and you want to save some money. The G is your series. What is but that? You keep holding that up. behind us. That's a P series, and that's another one that Michael is asking about. The P series is a bonding series. So this unit here is capable of bonding two internal modems, two external modems, and two cell phones for six-channel bonding. I'm still testing it. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to actually test something before saying it's ready for prime time. 
Um, this unit here has the wrong modems in it, so I can't fully test it. It's got modems that are good for Latin America, so I'll be sending this <laughs> off to Latin America, and I'm going to wait for my version that I can actually test before I can sign off and actually order these and tell everybody, hey, it's an $800 bonding unit with six, up to bond six things together. Amazing, you know, at which point I'll be shouting that from the top of the tallest buildings. All right. It's not, not there yet. Okay. So Kenny thinks it's um, an encoder. That's good, Kenny. I like that. That's good. That's good. It's an encoder, good. not an encoder. Yep. Very sharp. Very sharp. Can't get anything by Kenny. Uh, no, sir. There is also a rack series, so you can get ease in a 1U rack with four of them inside. So if you like uh, rack mount stuff, they've got encoders and decoders in a rack. That's cool. That's yep. cool. All right, so Michael says force and bonding. What about the unbonding? Yeah, more segment? or less. Um, so that is handled by a company called OmniStream, um, okay. and that's part of what we're putting it all, putting everything together. You know, uh, that's why. Got it. Yeah. So Kiloview does not handle the bonding, um, the actual service. Uh, but the neat thing is, is that the OmniView, um, OmniStream, sorry, uh, will output NDI, so you can run an application on the same system as vMix and get your bonded signal back into um, your vMix box, run on the same box. Wow, wow, I love it. It'll be cool, hopefully soon. It. I'm shooting for about a month. Okay. I gotta, you know, I gotta get the unit in, the right unit, and then I gotta test it, and then I gotta order some, and then after that, we'll be ready to rock and roll. Cool, cool. Well, maybe, uh, maybe I can get one of those. <laughs> when when they're yeah when we'll I will have a demo unit when I'm done with the demo unit if you want to do a little songy dancey showy kind of thing we'll, we'll oh yeah it. that'd be good that would be good yeah. some people are interested in bonding it happens yes oh yeah yeah holy cow yeah lots of people are interested yep. in bonding uh, because you know there's yeah. not a lot of competition in that in that uh, in that market uh, yep. to have some competition in that market would be really really good. Yeah, I mean, we saw what happened with uh, with Bird Dog um, when the Mage Well came out. the The price of their Mini dropped, you know, a hundred dollars, and the price of the Studio dropped what two hundred dollars, something like that. Um, yeah, competition's good. Co competition's good. Good for consumers. Okay, FNN Friday Night good Network friends. says, will the decoder output NDI and SDI simultaneously? Well, Jim, the, the decoder no. is taking in NDI. So that's what it's, it's decoding the NDI signal. So it's probably not going to pass it through in yeah. that sense, right? I mean, you can multicast NDI. Yeah. So you're, you know, think of it as, you know, you're, one of your NDI spigots is going to the decoder. Uh, it will turn NDI into uh, SRT. So it's not going to output NDI, but if you or RTMP. So that's this this guy here. This is the uh, MG300. <laughs> it's different than the D300. That stands for Media Gateway, and this little bad boy will take in NDI HX and turn it into RTMP or SRT or a SDI or HDMI all at the same time, or up to 300 channels of RTSP. So you can have. Uh, put one of these in a, yeah, 300. You can have one of these in a building and uh, you could have 300 televisions accessing it via RTSP, for example. That's why it's called a media gateway. Wow. Aren't you guys glad that I invited Eric on the show today? It's this a bit guy of a is just, he's just a lot. He's, he's a whiz kid. <laughs> And he's only 27 there's, there's years old. There's a lot old. to remember. It's amazing. Yeah. It's only for the 13th time. 17th, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 17th time. Uh, all right. Yeah, so I've been remiss in mentioning the um, their full NDI products. Uh, yes. They're available now, N3, N4, N30, N40. Um, encode or decode, not both at the same time. Okay. Uh, tally light on the front. POE, quarter 20 on the bottom. Um, so 
the M3 and N4 are HD, the N30 and N40 are the 12G and 4K HDMI P60. Okay, Jim, but, like Jim I has said, clarified people, his question. He says, if he's sending SRT to the decoder, is that possible? Will the decoder output both so, SDI and NDI? Uh, will uh, the decoder will not output S, uh, NDI. Right. Uh, yeah, no, you would take the SDI out of the decoder into an E1, which would turn it into NDI. Sorry, you need two boxes to do that. The good news is, is that you can do it with two boxes. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, Rich, the full NDI HDMI or a SDI is uh, the one that Eric just held up that had the quarter 20 and had the POE. That's that's not this guy. This guy is going to be NDI HX and yeah. soon to be NDI HX2, um, either and that's an the SDI one that, that's or an HDMI really, flavor. That's the one that's cooking along because it's the SRT functionality. Um, right. mixed with obviously NDI and RTMP, you can say to yourself, well, I might use it for SRT today. I might use it for NDI HX tomorrow. In the end, it might end up being an RTMP server. I might end up using it as an HLS server. I might just end up using it as a DDR record, whatever. Um, it's a Swiss <laughs> army knife for IP production. There you go. It has a lot of utility and you're paying $360 for something that can do almost anything. So it's kind of a slam dunk. You're going to need more than um, one. Yeah. 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 Or one of each. Or, or one of each. There you go. Yes. <laughs> so uh, Rich Rich has, has challenged himself to do an all NDI production with the jet ski racing. Um, so he's on top of a 20-foot scaffolding on the beach, and he wants to do all NDI with everything. So that's, that's where he's coming from on his questions. Uh, Ed wants to know, is you know, there a rack mount tray? I think you mentioned that there was a rack mount. Uh, so there's two things. There's a rack mount tray for products that aren't available in rack mount format. Uh, the nice yep. thing about the rack mount tray is that if I want to get three of these and one, if I want to get three SDIs and one HDMI, I can yep. just zip this into a 1U tray. The rack mount units are a full box that's one, one U, has a shared power supply, uh, looks more unified. Gotcha. gotcha. Costs a little bit less than buying four units, too, so it's a little more cost effective. Hmm. Uh, okay. I think but it it's, you're stuck with, with four in a rack forever and ever. Yeah. yeah. That's why the rack trays are, are nice, you know, from a concept conceptual standpoint is you can mix and match what encoders per show you know if you want to swap out you know because they make encoders they make decoders they make hdmi they make sdi they make hd they make 4k trust yep. me stocking all of this stuff is challenging <laughs> especially now oh i bet i bet because all of a sudden something gets hot and poof, it all disappears yeah so when you're talking about doing all NDI on a beach, I instantly cringe a little bit because while I love <laughs> NDI, I also like using tools that are suited for uh, their job, which is why we still, you know, we we, we still truck in uh, SDI because an SDI, you know, cable uh, is a little bit more resilient. So I'm more of a tool for the job kind of guy. But here's the rub. Anything you take to the beach is disposable. So Rich's cameras are good maybe for a season. So he's going to use yeah. the, the $300 pocket HDMI camera um, mm -hmm. because he knows he's throwing it away. He doesn't want to put two grand into a camera or into he five cameras. He needs an ADA HD 100. It's a $300 HDMI camera with interchangeable lenses, and you can just pop one of these little suckers on top of it by the hot shoe. The Ada cameras have a quarter 20 mount on the top, and you're talking, you know, $800 for the pair. That would get you your full NDI. And you can go just a tad further and get 4K. That's true. Yep. All right. Ed would say, said it would be nice to fit this next to a UMC 404 HD which is just slightly larger. Yep. 
Uh, Rich is doing a remote broadcast in two weeks using the SRT encoder. And the encoder will be in Georgia at a lake, and he's going to be in California. So he's not even going on site. Oh, my gosh. That, what a nice. great concept, yep. Rich. R- remote that's, production that's it for right the win. There. Yep. There we go. There we go. Yeah, he says all his stuff rusts in a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I believe it. I have a house by uh, by a beach in Costa Rica, and I brought my Jeep down there. And let me tell you, that thing is dissolving before my eyes. <laughs> When was the last time you were down there? I bet it's been a while. Uh, f- February. Yeah. 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 I Jeez. went I went there from ISE uh, and, you know, I in my wisdom did not think that this was going to be a big deal, but we got back in under the uh un- under the before before things got really crazy. So we spent a couple of weeks down there. Yeah, otherwise you would have been stuck in Costa Rica for 4 months. Jeez. Yeah, which that's really that's <laughs> not the worst thing in the world. And uh, no. I did find somebody who who to stay in my house to keep an eye on it. So that was cool. There you go. Well, Eric, I think uh, the questions have slowed down, so I think it's it's time for us to to button this up. Um, yeah. Thank and you I for got your a time. At the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Well, it is for you <laughs> down here in the south. It's four, five hours earlier. Um, so this is the uh, the Killaview KVE1. This is the the E1 is the SDI version. The E2 is the HDMI version. This is uh, 359. It's going to be available in the Eastern Shore Broadcasting uh, dot com website uh, online store next week. The HDMI version, the uh, the E2 will be 339 and available there. And we'll get some orders up to Eric so we can get some gear down this way. We'll be exploring, this is the encoder now. Uh, so this is gonna yep. be the shooting it out there. Uh, we'll be exploring the decoder line and some of the other Killaview products. Um, if you guys are interested in them, that's the thing. Uh, if, we're, yep. if, if you're interested, we're interested. If it solves a problem for you, then we wanna know about that. Uh, Michael Quist yes, says, great pal. show. Oh, Chris, yeah, Chris says, does it do PAL? So if you're overseas, yes, it does. Of course it does. It does PAL. Of course it does. But of course. And does it come with a mouse pad? Actually, it does not. if you buy one from us, it comes with a mouse pad. It's just not a kill of you mouse pad. <laughs> yeah. It's a mouse pad of our favorite software. All right, Eric, you're a champ. So let's let all these folks rock out to um, to our, our, uh, our get out of get out of town outro music outro that's right and if you wouldn't hang around for a second i've got just a little quick word you don't have to go home because you're already there that's right that's right (laughs) folks thank you so much we'll catch you later